Hey guys, it's Armor Shadow 001 back at it again with video games and back at it again with Destiny 2. And finally, I got the heir apparent. I am so happy. This gun took so long to get. The heir apparent is a new exotic heavy machine gun that came with Guardian Games for Destiny 2. It was such a pain in the butt to get. If you don't know how to get it, basically you have to compete in, in Guardian Games until you want to die. And then you keep going. So you have to get seven triumphs in order to unlock the class act triumph, which will then allow you to get air apparent. But honestly, I think it's worth it. It's a good gun. It's a good machine gun. But I'm also going to compare it with Xenophage and 21% the two machine guns that are right now at it, their peak. They're used the most often. They're used all the time. So we're going to talk about these and compare them. We got some damage numbers as well as some testing here, so it'll be interesting. So, what we're going to start off, of course, with is the perks for Air Apparent. Now, if you don't know, Air Apparent has the exotic perk, Heavy Slug Thrower. Basically, you hold your Aim Down Sights button to have the weapon spin up, and then you can only fire it once it's fully spun up. Now, people think that would leave you weak. Well, here's where its secondary trait comes in, Armor of the Colossus. Basically, when you're at full health, you create an arc shield while you're spinning up the weapon. It basically works just like an overshield, and it is pretty significant from what I've heard. You can, I've heard from people in Crucible that you can take a mountaintop shot to the face, you can take a revoker headshot to the face, and be fine. So, we'll see. I guess it's very interesting. So... Right now, we're going to get into the damage numbers here. So we're going to start off with, of course, air apparent. So per crit, it does 1,331 damage. Per body shot, you do 1,104 damage. And it has an ammo of 500 and an RPM of 900. Now, an ammo of 500 is crazy. It's insane. So basically, you have 200 in the magazine and then 300 in reserves. And it's 900 RPM machine gun which means it fires extremely extremely fast now with dps i have two different dps numbers here so i have dps with what is considered the preferred build when you're having uh, really high damaging machine guns which is a titan wearing acting war rig which is an exotic chess piece with the perk auto loading link and basically it reloads a portion of your magazine for as long as you're shooting which is very interesting so so we have two of these numbers, so that way you get one of like your your premium, what you'll see most Titans doing. I'm particularly a hunter, so we don't get access to this, but I'm doing your basically your two damage things of what if you had a warlock and a hunter without these exotics, and then you have a Titan with this exotic, which is like the most prime number. So for DPS with Acting War Rig, we get 19,737. And DPS without, you get 12,737, which is a steep drop. You lose about 7,000 there, which is a considerable drop. But its total damage is 665,500, and that's mainly because of the amount of ammo it holds and the RPM of the weapon. So total damage overall, you will do a ton. You will rip through enemies pretty easily. Now let's compare this with another exotic machine gun, and that is Xenophage. So Xenophage, because of its pyrotoxin rounds, uh, has explosive rounds, but also it doesn't crit. So there is no critical damage, there's only damage per shot. And to make up for that, it is 15,322. So already it does way more damage than air apparent per shot. But to counteract that, its ammo is 29, and its RPM is 120, which is about hand cannon RPM. So this is, just so you know, Xenophage is a semi-automatic machine gun. So you have to tap the trigger every time, hence why the RPM is so low. So the DPS with Acting War Rig is 30,644, and DPS without is 17,549. Now again, there's a big, big difference between those two numbers, um, but particularly there's also a big difference between Air Apparent and that. Air, Air Apparent is significantly lower with both Actium and without uh, for both their DPS numbers compared to Xenophage. And it's, but Xenophage's total damage takes a hit, and that is 400,044 
338. So, so that's, yikes, yeah, it's not the best, <laughs> so total damage, and that's of course because of its ammo and RPM, but on paper, this does way more damage than Air Apparent, and don't worry, it doesn't mean that Air Apparent is terrible, Air Apparent is still very, very good, but before I get into that, I guess we'll go into the third and final machine gun that we're going through. So with this, it's different with 21% Delirium because it's a legendary. It is very weird. It's also a pinnacle weapon, and people have been using it. It's very weird because its ammo, its RPM, and its body shots um, fluctuate. So we don't have those written down at all. All we have are uh, just based on crits because this thing doesn't really have hard recoil. So you're expected to hit crits with this all the time. So with its base crit, it is 955. Nothing to cry home about. But because you have the perk killing tally, which is killing more enemies, makes the weapon do more damage, then you get a little nutty. So we have these different versions of that. So with killing tally times one, your damage then goes up to 1,161, which is a 21.6% increase. Henceforth, the name 21% delirium. With killing tally times two, you have 1,368, which is a 43.2% increase. From base. You have killing tally times three, which is 1,575, which is 64.9% above base, or let's just say 65. Now, because this is also a legendary, you can also add a spec mod to this, whether it's major, minor, or whatever, which will also increase your damage. So I have killing tally times three plus spec, which then equals 1,697, which is a 77.7% .7 increase from base. So, again, Nothing crazy, and that's because it's not exotic, it's a legendary. But we're going to get into DPS with the Actium War Rig. So, with base, with Actium War Rig, you get 14,325. With Killing Tally times 1, you get 17,415. With Killing Tally times 2, you get 20,520. With Killing Tally times 3, you get 23,625. And with Killing Tally times 3 plus spec, you get 25,455. So already, you're past Air Apparent. <laughs> you're past Air Apparent at about Killing Tally times 2. So, in terms of DPS with Actium. So also, this does do better than Air Apparent. Now, if we get to DPS without Actium, then you get uh, 11,069, which is base. For killing tally times one, you get 13,457. Ki killing tally times two, you get 15,856. For killing tally times three, you get 18,256. For killing tally times three plus spec, you get 19,670. So again, that, that's that's better. <laughs> it is better than air repairing. And now for total damage, and we're also doing the same. For, so base total damage is 300,000. Sorry, 376,495. Okay. Nothing right about compared to the other two. Killing tally times one, you get 4, 451,629. For killing tally times two, you get 532,172. With killing tally times three, you get 612,675. Again, good. And then killing tally times three plus spec you get 660,133. So, it eventually is just, it's just under air parents total damage, but it's, it's really a minuscule difference. Now, does this mean you should use these weapons over air apparent? No, you can do whatever you want. Air apparent, I believe, is more fun than these two weapons. Uh, with the arc shield, you have more utility that way. It's just not the best weapon you could possibly use for DPS big bosses, such as raid bosses and stuff. You can use this for strikes, you can use this for gambit. It's fun, but that's really about all you can do with it. You can't really do much in terms of these big, big damage phases. It's not really worth it. Um, other than that, it's still a great weapon. It's still really fun to use. In Crucible, it does 33 damage per crit and 28 to the body. 
So it is worth it. It will rip through enemy guardians in the crucible. Um, my only thing about that is you don't really get a lot of heavy ammo in the crucible. At least when you get a break, you get about 68 rounds. Uh, and the, the arc shield, while significant, does take a little bit to get there. And it does take a bit to fire after you spin up. It takes about a second and a half, which, you know, could be between life and death. I mean, that was a problem with Wish Ender when it first came out in the fact that drawing it back took way too long in that it took a whole second to draw it back at the time and that would and then you'd be done you would get killed by the time you drew it back so you would have to really make sure you hit your shot so that one second does make a major difference but as long as you're tactical about it as long as you know what to do about it then you should be a-okay so basically that's my review of your parents so what i think about air parent it's definitely good. It's definitely a fun weapon. It's good for clearing ads. It's good for small boss damage. It's just not really made for damage phases in raids or really beefy bosses. That's really the only problem where it fails. Other than that, I absolutely recommend using this weapon. It is a lot of fun. Um, really, I mean, it takes a while to get it, so really grind out and get this weapon when you can. So, I'm going to end it right here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and apagando las luces.